اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the compassionate, the merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger, the peak of his creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, and his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially the leader of our time, the awaited savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala accept your amal and deeds in these blessed days of the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, Oh Allah, if you have not forgiven us in the month of Ramadan so far, then we ask you in what remains of this blessed month to forgive our sins and to bless us with your mercy. We continue our examination and analysis of Dua Al-Iftitah, this amazing, beautiful Dua, this treasure that has been passed down to us from the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. In our previous discussion, we examined the authenticity of Dua Al-Iftitah, and we highlighted five powerful passages in the supplication. In our discussion tonight, we will highlight another set of beautiful excerpts from Dua Al-Iftitah. The sixth passage that we examine from Dua Al-Iftitah is the one that states, Ya Rabbi, innaka tad'uni fa'uwalli ank. Oh Allah, you are calling on me, but I turn away from you. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call on us every day, but we turn away from him? Five times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to this special meeting, to this appointment. But we're distracted, we're busy with either work, with family, with entertainment. We have time for everything except salah. We make room for everything except salah. It's this burden on us. You call on me, but I turn away from you. Isn't this a sad reality that we experience every single day? Once one of my friends narrated this interesting and very moving story. He said that he had a friend, maybe two or three decades ago, his friend was waiting for a job interview. He had worked his entire life to get that position. So his boss or the person who would become his boss told him, okay, we have, a phone, we have a phone appointment. I am going to call you tomorrow at 2 p.m. And I will interview you over the phone. You don't have to fly to that part of the world or to that state. We can do this over the phone. He says, I went to visit my friend on the day of his interview at 12 p.m. So two hours before the interview. I went at 12 p.m. I saw him coming down the stairs, wearing a suit, preparing himself for that interview. He, he even had some cologne on. So he came at 12 p.m. He sat next to the telephone, expecting a phone call from that boss who's going to interview him. He says, I looked at my friend. I told him, are you out of your mind? What's, what's the matter with you? First of all, the appointment is at two, not now. It's not at 12. So why are you sitting next to the phone as if you're going to receive the phone call now? Secondly, why are you dressed up? You're wearing a nice suit. It's not like your boss is going to see you. It's a phone appointment. Number three, why are you putting the cologne on? It's not like he's going to be able to smell it. He said, my friend told me, look, this is the most important interview of my life. I've been waiting for this day. I want to take it seriously. I want to be in a professional mood. I want to have a professional attitude. I'm wearing 
the suit because I want to envision myself sitting in front of my boss, even the cologne that helps me. And I'm anxious. It's such an important call. I know it's at two. I'm not crazy, but I'm waiting for the call from now because it's such a serious call. Now, you might think this person's crazy, but this person is not out of his mind. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's treating that appointment with full respect and seriousness. Do we do the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to salah. That's why the hadith states it's mustahab before the adhan time. Get ready, do wudu, sit on your prayer mat. Show respect for this appointment. It's mustahab to, put, to apply perfume or cologne while you're praying. Praying with perfume multiplies the reward of the salah by 70 times. Why? One reason is because it shows formality. It shows that you're taking this seriously. You have an appointment with the king of the universe. Wear your best clothes for salah. This is highly recommended. Oh Allah, you call on me. But I turn away from you. We have so many distractions. Once a father narrated to me this incident that happened with his daughter. He told me, Sayyid, my daughter, she was obsessed with her social media, with her iPhone, literally spending 24-7 on this phone. It had preoccupied her full time. When the time for the adhan would come and I would call her to pray, jama'ah, as one family at home, she would come because she did not want to disappoint me, but I could tell she had no interest, zero interest. So one day when she came to pray, I told her, Baba, today I have a suggestion. Daddy, listen to the suggestion. Instead of praying on the ground where you pray on the turba or on the prayer tablet or the muhur, I want you to do sujood on your iPhone. She had this shocked look on her face. Dad, are you serious? I told him, yes, daddy, I am, I am dead serious. Why would you want me to do something like that? I told her, daddy, it makes sense. Because when you get a notification on your phone, you jump, your heart jumps to respond to it, to see what that notification is. When someone post a reply to your post on, on Facebook. When someone likes your image on Instagram, you quickly jump on your phone to see who it is. But when Allah calls you, you don't care. So yeah, you should worship this iPhone because it's consuming your mind and heart more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says she felt ashamed. She prayed. She went to her room. Minutes later, she came. She told me, Dad, keep this iPhone with you. He says, I took her iPhone. She came back a week later. She told me, Father, give me my iPhone. I just need to, you know, run a few important things, take care of some important business. But I want to say something to you. The last week has been the most peaceful week in my life, free of distractions, free of the distractions of social media. Finally, I know what ibadah means, what worship means, what salah means. Now I can stand and enjoy my ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for teaching me this valuable lesson. I really did not realize how much distracted I was. I was so preoccupied with this superficial life. You know, when narration states, sometimes a person is praying and then the person hastens his prayer. He rushes to finish it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, he says, my angels, look at my servant. He's rushing through his prayer because he wants to get something done. Does he not know that I call the shots? I will decide whether he will get it done properly or no. Where is he going? If he wants to get it done, let him stay with me. I have the keys to everything in the universe. You, oh Allah, show me hub, love. 
you become familiar with me through your love, but I don't care about you. I run away from you. I even show hatred towards you. How does Allah show us love? Allah doesn't have emotions. Emotions are the result of having a physical entity. We have these reactions in our brain, these chemical changes in our brain. We have the nafs, we have the soul, we experience emotions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no emotions. So how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show love to us? Through his bounties, through his blessings, by keeping you alive. Every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing love to you through the bounties that he's giving you. You show me, you show affection to me, but I don't correspond to you. I don't accept it from you. It's as if you are overreaching me. It's as, it's as if I have a favor on you, Ya Allah. It's as if you need me when I'm the one who needs you. Allah doesn't need us, my dear brothers and sisters, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly is reaching out to us, but we don't care. Let this dua address this challenge and dilemma that we all go through. Know how loving and merciful your Lord is. The seventh passage that we'll examine in this beautiful and fascinating dua, dua al iftitah Alhamdulillahi malik al mulk, all praise is due to Allah, who has the ownership of all that is to be owned in the universe. He's the king of kings. He owns the, king, the kingdom. He's the Lord of sovereignty. Mujril fulk. You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by outlining one of the actions of God. Mujril fulk means the one who allows the ship or the ark to flow in the sea. Why is this sign of Allah mentioned? Someone would say, okay, I'm sitting here reciting Dua of Tata and I'm thanking Allah for allowing a ship to sail in the ocean. Is that really significant? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters. It demonstrates one of the grand signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions this in the Holy Quran in several verses. For instance, in Surah Ibrahim, verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth and he brought down the water from the sky and through that water Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth for you fruits that are a means of your sustenance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected for you the ships that they may sail in the sea by his command. It's the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah An-Nah, verse 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has given you the blessings of the ocean, you eat fresh meat from it, the fish, tender meat. You also extract jewelry from the ocean, the pearls and other adornments that we find in the ocean. And you see the ships sailing in the ocean. Why is this amazing? Why does the Quran mention this? Number one, look at how soft water molecules are. A small pin sinks and goes down to the seafloor. But a huge ship is carried by this water. Isn't this miraculous? Who put these properties in water to do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, some ships, like the harmony of the seas, it's considered the heaviest ship in history. It has a gross tonnage of 226,963. We're talking about 226,000 tons. That's over 200 million kilograms. Can you just fathom and conceptualize this weight? 
or consider the world's largest cruise ship. It's called the Oasis of the Seas. It stands 20 stories high. You've seen those big cruise ships. They're really, a, they look like a moving city. Now this cruise ship, the Oasis of the Seas, it's as long as four football fields. It can accommodate over 5,000 guests. And that's just that double occupancy. How does the water carry all that weight? Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your ancestors could not come to this continent if it weren't for this property in water that would carry ships and it allowed people to come to various continents. The products that you use, my dear brothers and sisters, they are imported. A lot of them are imported from other countries. How did they get here? Through ships. See how much this amazing law of density and buoyancy is useful. Have we ever cared to thank Allah for that? If water did not have this particular density, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not created the law of buoyancy that creates reverse energy, motion, pushing up an object, allowing it to float, you would not have had any of these blessings. You couldn't live the way you are living today if it weren't for this amazing feature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in water. Have we thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? My dear brothers and sisters, du'a al iftitah is fascinating. There's science contained in this du'a. Look at these laws around you. Do you think they just randomly happened? The eighth one, the eighth passage. Musakhir al riyah Oh Allah, I praise you for controlling the winds. This is another grand sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wind is a beautiful source of renewable energy. And today, this renewable energy is being developed more and more. Now, the energy that drives winds originates from the sun. Basically, the sun heats the surface of the earth unevenly. And this creates warm spots and cool spots. This creates differences in pressure. And the wind goes from low pressure, from high pressure to low pressure. That's how the wind works. Whenever you have an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure, the wind migrates and moves from high pressure to low pressure. This is the mechanism that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the planet. Subhanallah. It's just the earth being heated by the sun, but because the heating is uneven at the equator, you have more sunlight. You have more energy coming from the sun. This generates winds. It's so simple, subhanallah. But it's so complex when you look at it in action. Now, what does this wind do? One of the blessings of this wind is that it carries water to faraway lands. With that wind, we would not have any rain. We couldn't live. We couldn't survive without the power of wind on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this reality in Surah Fatir verse 9. Wallahu alladhi arsala riyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sends forth winds. Fatuthiru sahaban. Then they generate clouds in motion. Fasuqnahu ila baladin mayyit. Then we drive those clouds to dead lands. Fa'ahyayna bihi al-ard. We give those lands life. That's how the rainwater works. Ba'da mawtaha. After those lands were dead. Kadalika nushur. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to resurrect you on the day of judgment. Through wind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generates clouds. And that's how we get water from the rain. Now that rain is extremely heavy. Have you ever tried to carry one gallon of water? That's eight pounds. Now look at an average thunderstorm. You know those thunderstorms, especially when they come in the summer, they generate a lot of water. They soak the entire city. An average thunderstorm weighs 500 million kilograms. 500 million kilograms of water. Can you just imagine this weight? Who can carry that? 
who can carry that? Is there any vessel that can carry this water and transport it thousands of miles? Who can ferry so much water around the planet? Allah says, I've done it through wind. And what is the wind? SubhanAllah. It's so thin. You can't touch it. You can't see it. Yes, you can feel the force of it. Well, you cannot even see it. It's not really even tangible. Allah says, yeah, this, which is not really tangible for you, which you can't even see, I carry billions and billions of gallons of water with it. Isn't that a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who put this system? How many more signs do we want, my dear brothers and sisters, to see the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are inundated with these signs. We are surrounded with these signs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet we challenge Allah. Show me the existence of God. You want really? Really? You want more than that? This is all random. This universe came as a result of some random procedure, some random event. There is no designer to this universe. Look at every single aspect of planet Earth. Every single aspect of planet Earth. And you find that it is carefully designed to support life on earth. Yet we have doubts in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you read Dua al-Iftitah, remember these beautiful signs. They strengthen your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things that we don't even think about, we take for granted. Allah is saying, look, these give you life. Without them, don't think you could have survived. Don't think you could have enjoyed life. Don't think you could have built cities and countries. It would have been impossible. The ninth passage, as we are examining the beautiful signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Faliq al-Isbah. Allah causes the dawn to split. It's completely dark. When you look at the horizon towards the east from which the sun rises, you see that it's dark. Right? In many parts of the world, of course. Now, if you go to the northern latitudes in the summer, it's not pitch black darkness. But in many parts of the world, it's dark. Then suddenly you see the light of dawn breaking that night darkness and it continues to rise, rise, rise until slowly the light scatters around and it becomes bright. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created this mechanism. This is one of the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That sunrise and sunset also, equivalently, goes through a transition. The sun doesn't just suddenly rise. Slowly, slowly, you see that you have dawn fajr, which is now an opening in the sky. That's the linguistic meaning. You have a gap, an opening of white light that begins to increase. And from fed, from dawn till sunrise, it usually takes an hour, an hour and a half in order for the disk of the sun to rise. And even when the sun rises, the brightness slowly begins to increase and increase until the sun goes at a high angle, then it has full brightness. Now you might think, okay, isn't it like this on other planets? No, that's not how it is on many planets. That's not how it is on the moon. Because the, the moon does not have an atmosphere. You know what happens on the moon? Sunrise on the moon comes suddenly. And also because there is no atmosphere on the moon, sunset on the moon also is abrupt. Suddenly the sun rises. The moment after the sun sets in the moon, it becomes pitch black, dark like midnight. No lingering colors at all. But that's not how it is on earth. You've seen sunrise. You've seen sunset. You've seen half an hour before sunrise. How Allah smoothly brings the day. Imagine if we live like the moon. Suddenly the sun rises with full brightness. Do you know how inconvenient that would be? That's like pitch black darkness in your room. And then some, so, suddenly somebody turns on projector lights on your face. That is really annoying. In fact, it will affect your health. It makes you agitated. 
Imagine how many accidents would happen on the freeway and the highway if sunrise and sunset were sudden. Imagine people are driving, it's pitch black darkness at night. Suddenly you have the full force of the sun shining at them. Believe me, the people would crash instantly. And then the same at night. Imagine you're driving, it's beautiful, it's bright. Suddenly, it's like a switch is turned on, it's pitch black darkness. Imagine how many accidents would have happened. Who gave earth these features? My dear brothers and sisters, have we ever cared to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings? Have you ever even thought about that? Dua al iftitah reminds you, Faliq al Isbah. This is one of the beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See how he has designed the earth for you. How Allah is so gentle on you. Allah makes the day come slowly, slowly, giving you time, adjust to it. This is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the night comes slowly, adjust to it, get ready for it. It didn't have to be that way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that way because he loves us, because he has blessed us, because he cares about us. How do we pay him back? By turning away, by sinning. The least that we can do is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, list down these blessings. Oh Allah, the features of the water and the buoyancy and the density and the ship that's able to move. I thank you for that. I couldn't live my life without it. Oh Allah, the wind that you generate, the blessings of the wind, the benefits of wind and how it allows the rain to give us life. I thank you for that. And even Ya Allah, Ya Fadiq Al-Isbah, because this is mentioned in the Holy Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, mentions this in one of the verses of the Holy Quran. Oh Allah, I thank you for that. For designing the planet such that night and day alternate so smoothly. The transition from night to dawn is so smooth, it's just mind-boggling. Subhanaka ya Allah, how great you are. How beautiful is your system. Oh Allah, open our hearts to your path of guidance. Oh Allah, we ask you, to always let these signs be visible to us so that our faith in you shines in our hearts. Always. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.